Hello guys, in this video we will be exploring the autosomal DNA of two Scottish Neolithic farmers. So let's start with the first farmer, he is a man, he's got Y-DNA I2A, nowadays most common in the Balkans. Uh, this is what he looked like with Nashakot, he is predicted to have hazel eyes actually, uh, which is kind of, a, kind of a light eye color for a farmer, for a European farmer. They tend to be brown eyed, but he's hazel eyed. He's got Greek shaped nose and he's got black hair. Uh, with Ysec, he's also predicted to have dark eyes, dark hair, and sort of light skin, I guess. And with Snipper Freak, he's predicted to have brown eyes, black hair, and white skin. Uh, he did not have BH1, which is very interesting, but somehow, without having BH1, he was heterozygous for BH2. I don't understand how that transpired. Probably it is this linkage event somewhere along the lines. And he's got IRF4, he's got two derived variants in this IRF4 variation, uh, which is a rare hunter-gatherer, blue eyes, red hair, pale skin gene. So he's got some, he's got some light color variations. In the pro frenetine pro variation of DRD2, he is heterozygous, which means intermediate risk of schizophrenia, intermediate number of D2 dopamine receptors, and he's got A2A2 genotype in TAC1, which is kind of the typical, typical genotype for a European and human in general. Uh, now, he's got the warrior with the IO genotype in COMT, which means val val. Now, uh, this is kind of a non-European genotype, right? The implications of this is that uh, he would have quicker reuptake of dopamine, less dopamine in his system, and uh, problems with attention and motivation, however, better stress resiliency. According to his genotype in ACT1, he had greater odds of cannabis-induced psychosis, so probably would not be a very good buddy to smoke weed with. And um, he did not have the sociopath gene, no derived OXTR, no sociopath gene, uh, which is pretty cool, you know, uh, pretty typical genotype for a European here. And he did not have derived EDEAR, no East Asian facial traits, no shovel shaped incisors, no epicanthic folds, no monolids. Uh, and he did not have the European lactose persistence mutation. Well, this mutation came about much later, uh, probably in the Bronze Age or Iron Age. Right, that's when it really took off. So he doesn't have it. And he also does not have the European mutation that protects against myopia. Now this one is a more ancient mutation and it's not even exclusively European, like other ethnicities have it too, but uh, he does not have it. It just happens to peak in Europeans. That's why I say it's a European mutation, but it's not really an exclusively European mutation. And he doesn't have it. So he's got uh, higher odds of myopia, uh, might need glasses to see in the distance. Now, moving on to polygenic risk scores, he's got a very high risk score for Crohn's disease. Uh, he's got a high risk score for type 2 diabetes. He's got a high risk score for bipolar disorder. Uh, he's got an average risk score for Parkinson's disease. Um, a low risk score for schizophrenia. Um, a low risk score for type 1 diabetes. A average risk score for brain aneurysm. And an average risk score for asthma. This is what he scores with Eurogenes K13 on GED match. Uh, quite a lot of North Atlantic actually, but this is a typical result for a European farmer. Uh, mostly Southern, mostly Mediterranean components, but the North Atlantic here, it does represent a little bit of Western hunter-gatherer or Northern European-like shift, right? Uh, he is closest to Sardinians, followed by various Spanish people, and he's actually getting modeled as a mixture of Sardinian plus Basque. So he's slightly more Northern than Sardinians, and you can see this with G25 as well. With G25, he's getting modeled as a mixture of Sardinian plus Basque, uh, which is because he's not a pure Anatolian Neolithic farmer. He's an Anatolian Neolithic farmer plus uh, European hunter-gatherer components. He's got some European hunter-gatherer admixture relative to the Anatolians, right? And you see this European hunter-gatherer admixture here with MDLPK11, around, you see around 20% European hunter-gatherer admixture with this calculator. Uh, this is what he scores with the ancient Eurasia K6, so we see that it's not, not, not an entirely, not an entirely southern individual, he's got some European uh, shift, northern European shift too, closest to Sardinians once again, and actually getting modeled as a mixture of Anatolian Neolithic plus Matala, or Anatolian Neolithic plus Scandinavian hunter-gatherer, so uh, a mixture of around 80% Anatolian Neolithic plus around 20% uh, European hunter-gatherer is this guy. This is what he scores with uh, PONDNL K12. Here we can see he's scoring 27% European hunter-gatherer, actually uh, even higher than with the previous calculators. But the oracle here is just stupid. I don't really know how to interpret this. And he is closest to Sardinians. Once again, uh, this is the recurring pattern here is that he is most similar to Sardinians. And he's getting modeled as a mixture of Sardinian plus various northern european groups so he's actually a little bit more northern europe shifted than what's typical for sardinians 
And uh, now we're moving on to the second farmer. By the way, I want you guys to pay attention to how far north this individual is. How, d how distant is this from Anatolia, where these farmers originally came from? I think it's literally closer to Greenland than to Anatolia in terms of geography. And yet this individual is very, very Anatolian in his DNA. Very extremely Anatolian. Uh, I mean, I'm talking Neolithic Anatolian, of course, not modern Anatolian, but he's very, ana he's very Neolithic Anatolian in his DNA, despite living literally at the same latitude of, as the southern portions of Alaska. Now, uh, this is his predicted phenotype. He is predicted to have brown color eyes, snub-shaped nose, and black hair. Uh, with Snipper Free, also predicted to have brown color eyes, black hair, and white skin. And he does not have BH1, so doesn't have BH1, which means no BH2, no BH3, no BH4. And which is kind of kind of even exotic even by Neolithic farmer standards because most Eurasians have BH1, even like Chinese people, even like people in America, some of them have BH1, blue eye haplotype 1, and this Anatolian farmer does not even have that, right? So he's definitely a very dark colored individual. He is heterozygous for the pro frenetine pro variation in DRD2, so intermediate levels, in intermediate number of D2 dopamine receptors in the brain. He's got A2, A2 genotype in TAC1, so normal number of dopamine D2 receptors in the brain, not a reduced number, which would follow the A1, A1 genotype. And he's got uh, heterozygous calls in COMT, VALMET variation. He's heterozygous here, he's got VAL. Met. So, uh, what we can draw from this is that he's got intermediate levels of dopamine and intermediate number of dopamine receptors in his brain. He's got heterozygous genotype in OXTR's variation that has to do with uh, empathy, so he's, he's a carrier for the sociopath gene, let's put it this way. He does not have East Asian EDAR, uh, no East Asian facial traits, no shovel-shaped inserts, no epicanthic folds. Uh, he does not have the European lactose persistence mutation, which means probably was lactose intolerant as an adult. Uh, but this is a very recent mutation. They might have had their own mutations that came before. And um, he actually does not have the mutations that protect against myopia. Definitely, um, I'm thinking that this person had myopia, actually. I'm thinking that he might have been nearsighted or farsighted. He's got some kind of myopia, most likely. Moving on to polygenic traits, he's got an average risk score for Crohn's disease. He's got a high risk score for coronary heart disease, a very high risk score for brain aneurysm, uh, a very high risk score for bipolar disorder. Uh, he's got an average risk score for Parkinson's disease. Um, he's got an average risk score for asthma. He's got a low risk score for type 1 diabetes and he's got a very low risk score for type 2 diabetes. And uh, this is what he scores with Eurogene's K13 on GED match. Also pretty similar result to the previous sample. Uh, maybe a little bit more southern actually, but still closest to Sardinians. Uh, still closest to the same exact population. Still getting modeled as a mixture of Sardinian plus Basque. So overall, pretty similar result to the previous result, pre previous sample. And with G25, this time I decided to show you like his ancient admixtures. So in terms of the ancient admixtures, he's a mixture of 80% Anatolian Neolithic plus 20% Western hunter-gatherer. Uh, mostly Anatolian Neolithic plus around one-fifth uh, European hunter-gatherer admixture. And this is what you're going to see with um, ancient Eurasia K6 calculator here too, because the first, uh, the very first line in the oracle is 80% Anatolian Neolithic plus 19% Matala 12. So that's the very first line you see with the um, oracle here actually. So that's kind of what he is. He's a mixture of Anatolian Neolithic farmer. The majority of him is Anatolian Neo Neolithic farmer, as stupid as it is, uh, because he is literally so far north and he's probably closer to Greenland than to Anatolia. He is still majority Anatolian Neolithic farmer, and only a tiny minority of him is Western hunter-gatherer admixture. Uh, thank you guys for watching my video until the end. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. And also you can download both of these samples from links which are in the description of the video. You can download them in 23andMe format.